Hello everybody, I am Nico D. So the Raspberry Pi 5 has been announced. So we are gonna take a look at the announcements today. So it is coming in October 2023. So that is next month. So they say about two to three times the speed of the previous generation. I don't know where they get that number. And featuring silicon designed in-house for the best possible performance, we've redefined the Raspberry Pi experience. So I'm not gonna watch the video, you can watch the video over here. So development days, introducing the Raspberry Pi 5, so it will come with a plastic case, I'm not so fond of that. The biggest issue I see, we are gonna talk a lot more about this. 27 watts USB-C, but the problem is it is only 5 volts. So it is 5 volts, 5.4 amps, and that is just stupid. That is, I can't comprehend how stupid that is. So let's check the specs. Let's uh, increase the size of this window a bit. Okay, and press F11 so of course we have a Broadcom SOC so the BCM 2712 and it is clocked at 2.4 gigahertz quad core 64 bits A76 so that is pretty nice so that is about the same as I have got here on my uh, RK3588, but the RK3588 has these four cores at 2.4 GHz A76, but it also has got four cores A55 at 1.8 GHz. But we can do the test. This isn't fully scientific. Uh, I can just show you. So task sets. Oh no, Jesus. Genie. Where is my genie? Mixed tile blades, Mechatronics mini PC. So Debian, you want to have core 0, 5, 6 and 7. 1, 2, 3, 4 are the big cores. Okay, so cores 1, 2, 3 and 4 are the big cores on my RK3588, on my Mechatronics mini. So let's do task sets C. 1, 2, 4, so that's core 1, 2, 3 and 4, okay, 7 sets B, and let's run that. So let's look further, so it will have uh, cryptography extensions, 512 kilobytes per core L2 cache, and 2 megabytes shared L3 cache. So the GPU will be a video core 7 GPU supporting OpenGL ES 3.1 and Vulkan 1.2. So I cannot say anything about this. We don't know. I don't know anything about uh, this GPU. So it has got dual 4K 60 HDMI. So display output with HDR. Is it full sized? No, it is again micro hdmi so i do not like that it is a very bad connector so uh, 4k 60 hecv decoder if it works lpddr4x so that makes a difference the x is a little bit faster than the 4 so uh, at sale at launch it will be choice between 4 gigabytes and 8 gigabytes but i already read there will be a 16 gigabyte version later on so it has got dual bands wi-fi 802.11 ac it has bluetooth 5.0 and bluetooth low energy ble it is still using micro SD card slot for the main storage device so with support for high speed sdr 104 mode so if this really is high speed so if it can do more than 100 megabytes a second then this would be okay so i've got enough sd cards the sandisk extreme pros are very fast but the problem is no sd reader of sbc's can go that high 
So if they could go that high, then it would be good. It would be a good experience. It would be almost the same as an EMMC, but the reader must be very high. So I hope this will be very high that it can do more than 100 megabytes a second. So we have got two times USB 3 ports, but both support five gigabits per second operation simultaneously. So so that means that each port has its own controller, they each can do 5 gigabits, so that's about 420 megabytes, I think, per port. So you could copy a file from one port at 400 megabytes to the other at 400 megabytes without having bandwidth issues. Then it also has got two USB 2 ports, I like that, just for simple things like... Uh, Keyboards and mice and uh, so So gigabit Ethernet. I was expecting 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. That is a bit of a letdown Gigabit Ethernet is so old. It's more than 20 years old Why do we do this? Two two times four lanes MIPI CSI and DSI so it is both CSI and DSI so it can be used for displays or cameras then the biggest change that we've got is the PCI Express 2.0 one lane interface for fast peripherals requires a separate M.2 hat or other adapters so as you see here it is it is using such a yeah, raspberry pi connector over here a ribbon connector and uh, that should be nice i don't know i think the hat will come on the downside because the top side has the sock of course so then the biggest issue i see here is 5 volts 5 amps dc power in usb-c with power delivery support so this is a big problem 5 amps at 5 volts that is just that is that is crazy that is obscene it's I, I can't find the words for it it's so bad usb cables are not made to put 5 amps through it at 5 volts that is just stupid who ever thought about this this should be pd if it goes to 25 watts with pd at 12 volts then there is no problem but if it goes to 5 amps with 5 volts then there is a serious problem if you are not using the official PSU, if you are using any USB cable because no USB cable is made for 5 amps. So that is a problem. So I use my SBCs with power banks. These cannot give 5 amps for sure. My biggest one can give 3 amps to one port which is already good but 5 amps that will not go. And uh, yeah, it will just be a shit show. It will be a shit show. This is so stupid. They have got problems with power delivery from the first Raspberry Pi they made. My first Raspberry Pi was a 2B. That had problems with powering, but it didn't consume much. So the problems with that powering weren't that good, that big. But then... The Raspberry Pi 3B and the 3B Plus came, they consumed way more, the problems were a lot higher. Then the Raspberry Pi 4 came, again more consumption and again a bigger problem with the 5 volts. I really do not like this, so Raspberry Pis, they need the official PSU from Raspberry Pi or else you will have problems. So if I use my normal PSUs that are not to 5.4 or 5.3 volts, then I have got a thunderbolt in a corner of my display and that means it is undervolting and it goes to I think 500 megahertz on all cores. So it becomes a true potato. So this is just unacceptable for me. I hope they will bring out another version that can do PD or 12 volts would be good also. But 5 volts 5 amp, that's 
stupid. That's stupid. I can't comprehend how stupid that is. So Raspberry Pi, standard 40 pin header, a real time clock powered for from external battery. So I don't see a real time clock and a power button. So there is a power button. I think it's here. Yes, that's the power button. So here is the CSI and DSI. We've got a connector for a fan. This fan and a heatsink looks okay, but we, we will need this heatsink and fan to keep it cool. So what else is there to say? Not that much. So here we can see the boards a little bit. It isn't the best looking board for sure. I really hate micro SD. I really hate micro HDMI. USB C 5 amps, just a stupid power over Ethernet. So it has a new type of sock with a metal bracing. Yeah, it is Raspberry Pi. I don't think I will use this board a lot, but I do want it. I just want to review it because it is Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi was the first board I bought, the Raspberry Pi 2B and then the Odroid C2 and I immediately knew Raspberry Pi sucks. But of course Raspberry Pi can bring it for a good price and I hope this will be a good price and then it could be good for some goals, like for gaming this could be good. For light desktop it might be, I don't know, SD card is slow, so yeah, it is good, it is a multifunctional board of course, it is a Raspberry Pi, it's an SBC, so uh, for that it is good, but for many tasks it will not do, it consumes too much for uh, battery use. Then the 5 amps who can provide that, if you are not using the normal PSU, that's a problem. So for IoT I don't see this being a great board, maybe for cameras that could be to record cameras if the decoding and encoding works well. My vision on this board is I'm happy there is a new board, I'm happy there is a new Raspberry Pi because the ARM SBC world lives from competition so the better the competition the better the boards, so for that it is good, but I don't think I will be using this board a lot. I just wanted to review it. So if you want to help me buy it, please donate on my PayPal or become a Patreon. And here our result of our 7-zip decompression, so it is 12306 on the 4 big cores A76 at 2.4 GHz. So this should be about the same for the Raspberry Pi 5. So the Raspberry Pi 4 gets 7460. Oldroid N2 Plus does 11750. The Kadas Fim 4 does 14138. And the RK3588 does 16901. So for a quad core SBC it will outperform any other quad core. But of course it cannot go against the RK3588. So that will be it for today, it's just a quick look, I cannot say anything more. Okay, so thank you all for watching, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, see you all later, bye!